back here with the 51 Ford truck and uh, need to do something that uh, probably should have done a couple weeks ago, which is with the engine rebuild. Uh, of course, we had the brake in oil in there. Um, so we need to, uh, they told me to probably get about 150 miles before it's time to uh, change that out. Um, and it's been at least that. And uh, unfortunately, I just had some stuff come up. I had some surgery and I've just not been capable of doing very much lately, but I think we covered enough today we can go ahead and do. So this is the first oil change I've ever done on the truck. Um, so that should be a learning experience. Maybe you'd like to come along with me. Of course, this here is the where the oil goes in, um, into there. And probably the biggest change from other oil changes is, of course, these older cars, the oil filter canister is up here on top rather than down below. My Cadillac is the same way and I changed that just a couple, three weeks ago. And uh, it can be a challenge uh, because uh, that stuff just, the oil just sits in there and um, there's no way to get it out other than I found siphoning it out. So I think I've got a real pain to do it last time. I literally used an old turkey baster uh, it's siphoning out there probably. I had to siphon about 30 base, basterfuls. I'm not sure if that's a word. Um, so that was a bit of a pain, um, but we'll work on that. But uh, let's go ahead and get under this and uh, get the old oil, breaking oil drained out. Okay, this is actually my first time underneath the truck. Um, so obviously you can tell from the shiny New pa newly painted oil pan. What's going on there? Um, but uh, obviously I'm guessing that is the nut because I don't see anything else. That's a little strange that every other car I've dealt with it's been on the side. And uh, uh, I've never seen one that was straight down like this. But maybe in 1951, that was the style. So that is a big old nut. Um, I think I measured it about an inch, it might even be an inch and an eighth across, and I do not have any sockets or crescent wrenches that are that big, so we are going to have to go with just the old adjustable crescent wrench here, see what we can do with that, uh, kind of get some navigation from under here, so I've got right this right here, that is the return line from the oil canister up above, you can probably see it up there. And so that line goes over here, perhaps around here over the, I think that's the uh, steering linkage. <coughs> um, and then that's where it returns back into. So the way that flows is I believe it actually flows up, or excuse me, it flows up into the canister and then down back here into the crankcase. But anyway, let's see if we can do this. Gosh, if my, hopefully my wrench is big enough. Man, that's just a honking big nut. Oh yeah, just barely. Right, let's see what, what see what we can do. Hopefully, when they put this on, they did not over tighten. This is always not as easy with, uh, with one of these. Not to mention trying to hold the phone as well. Oh, they did not. I like that was super easy. All right. I don't know, did they put the, uh, I'm always curious with these old ones, what kind of uh, uh, insulation they've got. This one doesn't seem to have much of anything. You see that there? It's just relying on the threads. My Mustang, uh, which has the 351 Cleveland, had that as well. But I just continually had problems, even with a, I bought a new factory nut. Um, but uh, even with that, um, it's still, uh, I would get little droplets there. So I ended up getting a, uh, like a little a uh, little little um, washer for it and no leaks ever since so this is interesting i've never dealt with the raking oil of course i think it's supposed to be just thinner um 
boy, that did not seem like a lot of oil came out. Maybe just because it was such a large hole and it came out so fast, I don't know. All right, well, we'll let this drain out a bit and then uh, head up top. All right, let's see about getting this canister off. I like when things are not over tightened. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if I actually need to replace this fuel filter or fuel filter, oil filter, because of course it was replaced when they rebuilt the engine. And I don't know if 150 miles of uh, braking oil really requires a fuel filter. Fuel filter, I keep saying fuel filter, oil filter. I do have one, um, but uh, let's see what we can see. Okay, hopefully this will come off pretty easily and not be a pain in the butt. Of course it is. Okay, I got that off of there. Just had to pry it with a uh, little screwdriver. I see it actually seems like it has some notches. I'm not sure if those were intended. It looks like they were intended around the edges there. So probably specifically for that reason. Good little American ingenuity. All right, so hopefully this will come out Oh, there's some suction, of course, because there's, here's the thing is, there's still oil in there. In fact, uh, yeah, it's going to be dripping like crazy. Yeah, let that drip, drip, drip. Yeah. All right, I think I need to let that sit there and drip for a bit. All right, so there is the filter out. For those who've never seen this, uh, of course, if you look at this paper and cardboard uh, there, and they think, what the heck? Well, that's what's actually inside of a modern filter. It just has that metal case over it. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, so, I don't know, looking at this, I mean, I can't imagine this would be glommed up after just 150 miles of driving with braking oil. If this was like an old engine that we were trying to restore from not running, I could see running it for a short time and then putting in a new filter because you're probably going to have a lot of junk in that engine. But this is a brand new rebuild engine, so I can't imagine. So we are going to go ahead and just leave that, um, reuse that filter. Um, so now we just have to get the oil that's still down in that canister. And here's the thing. There's probably a good uh, a quarter of a quart, a third of a quart, something like that in there. And it seems to me you have to get that out, otherwise you're just recycling old oil in with the new. So uh, here is my method we're gonna do with this, is I have a electric siphon. Um, and we're gonna try and drain that out of there. Uh, a lot easier than the turkey baster, that's for sure. Hmm. Might not be able to have have to get this thing lower for the gravity. All right. Hopefully this will work, and we will not put a whole bunch of oil on my nice shiny new engine. Yeah. I'm not sure if this thing is strong enough to suck viscous oil. It's pulling it up into the black two here that you can see. Oh, there it comes. Not a lot, but. I mean, I'm not expecting to get every last drop out of here, um, but if I can just get 90% of it, it's good. Okay, so it is working. Just needed that gravity help. Thank you. 
All right, that took a while longer than I thought, but as you can see, we got that buddy just about completely cleaned out. And you see, that's how much oil we got out of the canister there. Um, I'm guessing that's about a, like I said, probably about a quart of a quart, maybe a third of a quart, which raises our next question, is how much oil goes in this thing? Um, now, the specs say five quarts, but um, I experienced this when changing my Cadillac is, it also said five quarts. But that doesn't include the capacity of what's in the filter uh, uh, canister. So I found with the Cadillac, it actually was closer to a full six quarts. So we're going to put a little bit into the canister there um, to kind of give that a head start. Uh, just sort of you would, some people put oil into their other, the modern kind of can fil uh, oil filter canister. Uh, just to kind of get that started um, and see how that goes. So for the type of oil, I've heard lots of different things. You may remember I tried uh, diesel oil in my uh, Cadillac. I put it, put that in there. Some people say that's not good because it doesn't have anti-foaming agents and other things. So this is what was recommended to me was VR1 racing and classic cars because it has zinc and other good additives. For older cars, older cars really want more zinc, which is what you get with diesel, but um, this also has the more modern type of stuff. Um, so good for flat tappet engines and things like that. I got 1030 and 2050. Um, I think I'll go with the 1030 to start. I should think um, if if for some reason I'm getting leaks or whatever, we can switch to the higher weight. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get that in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the full five in, plus a little bit that I put up in the canister, um, and then we'll check the level. My guess is it will probably be a little bit low. Yeah, I just dripped a whole stuff load. Yeah, what is with these? I guess that this is just as far up as the hood goes. All right, I've got some cleanup now. See it there. Looks like we're right, uh, the sun is not helping. I think we're right in between in the safe zone. So, probably gonna use a little bit more. Um, I tend to like to fill it up to the top of that safe line rather than the midway. All right, humming along. That is our first successful oil change, at least done by me. Uh, probably good for at least a couple years. Maybe how much I drive this. And I think we're good. Just for kicks and giggles, here's what a, a boring old guy I am. I keep a chart uh, in my garage with all the information for all the cars, my uh, lawn care equipment too. Things like what kind of oil, how much, what kind of filter. One I did was drain plug. So every year, every time I change them, I don't have to go out there and figure out which drain plug size it is. Uh, it really saves a lot of time. I have this as a Google doc so I can update it. So we'll add in the information here for the truck and be on our way.